And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome here as we get set for race number 15 of the season of the SRA Almond Joy Series. We had an off week last week for these drivers. Two weeks ago, they were at the dirt track of Springfield Mile, and today we are at the very historic Rockingham Speedway, also known as The Rock, but more commonly known as North Carolina Speedway. And we're getting ready for 20 laps of racing here. We'll see the Hershey's Cup Series drivers here tomorrow. And coming into this race, this is race 15 as said, which means that after today's race, there's only five more Almond Joy Series races left in the regular season before we put together the 12 driver chase for the championship. And so time is running out and space is getting rather limited at this point right now. Drivers that would be in the chase currently would include Matthew Dalio being the only two-time winner this season. Then it would be Kermica Jazzin, last week's winner, Benny Watson, James Qualls, DJ Curtis, Nick Johnson, Jordan Lopez, John Andrews, Brooke Allen. So I'm looking down the list here. Um, Jeffrey Finguy just barely is in the chase right now because he's 29th in the point standings. And as things stand right now, those 10 would be the ones that would be in on wins. Then there would be two spots open for people to make it in on points, provided other former winners that are outside the top 30 points don't get back into the top 30. Right now, those two spots are being held by the points leader, Amori Studemeyer Jr., and second place, Eric Hayden. Drivers that could take those two spots away that have wins already this season but are outside the top 30 in points include Joseph Romero. He's 31st in points. Uh, Chris Dullerton. He is 35th in points. And our pole sitter today, Zachariah Hall, our winner from Las Vegas. He is 37th in the point standings. That team needs a good run here today to get themselves back up close to 30th in points so that way in the next five weeks they can get themselves back into the top 30. He's on the pole for today's race. We'll see what he can do alongside of him making his final Almond Joy Series start will be the two car driven by Elijah Gordon. Elijah Gordon announcing that he is uh, going to be uh, leaving the two team after this race and next week uh, it will be taken over by Zach Rogers. So Elijah Gordon making his final start. Good qualifying spot. This team's been really good with qualifying. It's just been finishing. That's been the struggle for the Ream Chevrolet team out of Richard Childress Racing. His teammate Jonathan Zorlin lines up in the uh, third position. Zorlin still looking for his first win of the year. And alongside of him, our winner from two weeks ago at Springfield Mile, Kermica Jazzin in the seven. Going to try and go back to back. Maybe pull up Matthew Dalio from earlier on this season. But without further ado, we're going to get these cars rolling off. And then we'll get ready to go racing here at Rockingham. So we'll keep an eye on Joseph Romero, Chris Dollerton, Zachariah Hall during the course of this race. See if they can get good finishes to get themselves back either into or at least close into the top 30 in points. Hall starting on pole. Romero starting there in the 6th position. It looks like Chris Dalton is starting 14th. You can take a look at what your starting lineup looks like down in the description below. And more than likely these drivers aren't going to have to make pit stops or anything in these 20 laps of racing. So it's just going to come down to track position and how hard you race and how good your car handles for 20 laps. As Zachariah Hall and Elijah Gordon will lead us down here to the start finish line. Green flag is out. We're underway at the rock. Zachariah Hall gets the early advantage. Zorlin jumps up to the high line. I saw a number of drivers using the middle to high line in practice. And it gets a really good run off the corner. As you can see, Zorlin's able to hang on to second. And Elijah Gordon hasn't really faded away there on that outside line. Still hanging tough in third, battling for third with Colin Denton. Get great uh, you get a lot of straightaway speed when you're on that high line there you see Elijah Gordon with that big run tries the crossover move on his teammate Zorlin can't make the move and Zorlin now 
Gets a nice run through the center of three and four, and he's going to try and take the lead away from Zachariah Hall. Zachariah Hall, of course, winning at Las Vegas. A second win would certainly help that team if he can make it into the top 30 in points and would pretty much all but lock him up a spot in the chase for the championship, kind of like Matthew Dalio did earlier on this season. But they've got to get themselves away from 30th in the points. And right now being mired 37th in the standings does not help their cause. So they're at least looking for a top five run today, if not a trip to victory lane. And wow, look at Jonathan Zorlin. Sticks the nose down to the inside, nearly got loose off of turn two, trying to stick it down there. Had to turn that wheel really hard to the left, and man, here comes Elijah Gordon, that outside line, I told you. That outside line gets a nice run, and he's going to go around his teammate via the high line, tries to clear him. Try to tuck right down in front of his teammate, could not do it. And will now remain side by side still. With Zorlin, Kev Shearer now trying to stick his nose in there. Three wide for second place. And at the line by half a car length, it was Gordon with the second position. But there's still going to be three wide heading here into turn one. Now Kev Shear gets a little tight and loses some ground there. It now settles back out to double wide. And one guy that's got to love seeing this in his rearview mirror has got to be Zachariah Hall. The more they battle for the second position is one more lap less that he has to defend the lead. Micah Jazzin now up here in the mix again. Jazzin trying to pull a Matthew Dalio and win back-to-back -back races. How about Tyler Markle there in the 48? Tyler Markle comes into this race in the, I'm trying to find him in the point standings here, the 28th position in points. So another driver down there near 30th in the standings that's trying to get away from that position. And there you saw that outside line. For Micah Jazzin utilizing it, got himself around Elijah Gordon and now moves into the second position. Now sets his sights on Zachariah Hall, two former winners this season. Hall winning race number three. For Micah Jazzin winning last week race number 14. And Jazzin's got a nice run through that corner. Oh, Tyler Markle into the wall back there in turn four. And he lost a lot of ground in Tyler Markle. He last time by was scored in ninth place, and I think he's lost more spots than that. He's about to lose a spot to Jordan Lopez. As Tyler Markle was running, I believe, at the time in the seventh position, and he's now dropped back maybe outside of the top ten. Here comes Kermica Jazzin trying to get the inside line going. Can't get a nose to the inside of Zachariah Hall. Got a good battle back here. That's going on for the fourth position. Colin Denton on the inside. Kev Shearer on the outside. And now Jonathan Reigns is up here in the picture in the 46 car. Jonathan Reigns, who had a strong start to the season, now finds himself down at 22nd in points. However, he was even in even worse shape after or before Springfield Mile, but after his finish at Springfield Mile, and I believe we might be under caution, actually. We are under caution, but going back quickly to... Talk about Jonathan Reigns. He jumped up nine spots in the standings to 22nd. So he was 31st in the points heading into Springfield two weeks ago. So maybe getting the season turned around for that team. He, as I said, he was one of the, the top five best drivers at the beginning of the season as far as consistent finishes. We are under caution. Caution coming out on lap number 10. And Cody Hagen's on pit road. Matthew Dalio's back here. There's some rear end damage on the Reynolds Wrap Chevrolet of Brooke Allen, our winner from Dover. I don't know if anybody else was involved. There's a points leader, Morris Studemeyer Jr. way back here. Might have been some damage. I thought I might have seen a little bit of front end damage on Mike Becker, but I guess not. Grace Nakamito's got some right side damage, and there you see the skid marks. Going into turn one as Cody Hagen sits on pit road waiting for the field to go by and he'll return back onto the racetrack, but I believe he's fallen a lap down to the leaders now. So we'll take a look at a replay of what put us under this caution right at the midway point of today's race here at Rockingham, North Carolina. Well, it just got really tight here off of turn four. They were practically four wide with Nick Gunther, Eric Hayden, Grayson Acovito, and Ryan George tries to stick his nose way down there to the inside. He just hooks Grayson Acovito in the uh, left rear 
And you're going to see Acovito come down. He's going to hit the wall right there. And then watch right here. He's going to keep his foot in the throttle. I don't think Acovito really appreciated that. And watch how he's going to keep his foot in the throttle, keep his car almost literally alongside Ryan George. And I think there might be a little message sent here to Ryan George. As Acovito is going to bring his car back up the racetrack. Right up into the Lucas Oil Chevrolet. And, and Brooke Allen, just an innocent victim right there, gets hooked around and rear ends into the safer bear. I think I think out of the three race cars, she's the one that got the most damage, to be honest. And then right there's Cody Hagen. Oh, and he gets into his teammate, Paul Minnick. He hangs on to it, though, as they all try to avoid that wreck. Goes back up, gets more contact with the six. You can see him, it's that uh, red and white four down there on the right side of your screen. Then he looks like he starts slowing. I wonder if he might have actually, I think he might have actually cut a tire down, maybe with making that contact with the six, maybe a possible right rear going down or something. That's why he had to quickly dive it to pit road. So pretty much a three-car incident put us under this caution flag. Grayson Acovito, Ryan George, and Brooke Allen, the three basically involved. And believe it or not, the temper's flaring between two, and they probably got the minimal amount of damage. Acovito and Ryan George, Brooke Allen, the innocent victim, getting more damage than the other two. So we'll have to see how this shapes up here for the remainder of the race between Acovito, Ryan George, as well as maybe for the remainder of the season. Both drivers not doing that badly in the points games. Ryan George 17th in points, Acovito up to 10th in points. Actually make that 11th in points. And, uh, I mean, neither one of them found victory lane yet this season. Last thing they want to do is be wrecking themselves out of races they could potentially win. But this could be a rivalry that we'll see in the coming weeks. Lights are out top the pace car. Green flag will come back out here on lap number 15 of 20. It will give us six laps to go. They were able to run 10 laps under green, so my instinct tells us with a single file restart, we will finish this race under the green flag in these final six laps. It'll just be interesting to see who has the better short run car. We ran 10 laps, if you can consider that a long run for the first run before the caution came out. Now it's going to be a six-lap dash for the win. Zachariah Hall has dominated this race, led every lap so far from the pole. He's holding on to the lead here, and we'll see if he can hang on to it for the final few laps. Second place, last week's winner, well, I should say last race out winner two weeks ago, Kermica Jazzin. Kev Shears right there in third. Elijah Gordon in fourth. Colin Dent in fifth. Jonathan Zorlin in sixth. Jonathan Rain seventh. Eighth is Tyler Markle. Ninth is going to be Jordan Lopez. And tenth, Chris Dollerton. Six drivers. Out of the top 10 for this starting lineup, 3rd through 8th have not been to victory lane yet this season. 1st, 2nd, 9th, and 10th have green flag back out. Kev Shearer got a good start there. Dives it to the inside on Kermica Jazzin for the 2nd position. And again, kind of shades of what happened in the first half of this race. Looks like the battle is going to go on for the 2nd position. That's going to allow a little bit of leverage for Zachariah Hall. Micah Jasson, though, his car's been good on that high side. Right now, still hanging side-by-side side with Kev Shearer for the second position. If anybody's going to make a pass for the lead on Zachariah Hall, it's got to probably be on that high side, because you know Zachariah Hall's going to keep his car plastered to the bottom. Look at Kermika Jasson way up the racetrack there in three and four, but it might work. Gets a nice run, pulls right along to the bumper of the Flex Seal Chevrolet Camaro. And Zachariah Hall noticed that and moved up to block him there on the straightaway. Look at it again. Look at there. Jazzin again way up on the high side. Gets a big run and puts his front bumper to the rear bumper of Zachariah Hall. He's going to try the high line again in three and four. Way up the racetrack. Hall's got to try and go up and block him. He did. Oh, but I don't. Oh, I think. Did he block him enough? I think he did. No, he didn't. Alongside comes Kermica Jazzin through one and two. And using the high side, I think he's got him cleared. Kermica Jazzin to the lead. Power move on the high side. I said if you are going to get by Hall, you had to do it the high side. And Jazzin was able to keep at it and finally completes the pass, and there's only two laps left to go. Kev Shearer now using the high line. He moves to second. Markle, he's going to move to third. Zachariah Hall's car going away late. 
And here comes Kev Shear to the inside for the lead on Kermica Jazzin. But Jazzin using that high line that he's just recently found hangs on to the top spot. White flag in the air. Kermica Jazzin trying to win two races in a row. He won two weeks ago at Springfield. He wants to win here today. Confirm himself a spot in the chase at Rockingham, North Carolina. Shearer's got one more chance. He's got to go high here in three and four, does he? Moves up about a half groove, but doesn't close the distance. And Kermica Jazzin will go two for two. Two wins in a row. Jazzin takes the checkered flag here today at Rockingham. Well, I said it at the beginning of the race. I didn't know it was actually going to be a thing. But Kermica Jazzin just pulled a Matthew Dalio from earlier on this season. Two wins in a row. And now Kermica Jazzin joins Matthew Dalio as the only drivers to have multiple wins this season. Jazzin, after his win last week, jumped up to fourth in the point standings, only six points out of the points lead. Today, he not only picks up his second win of the season, he probably has locked himself up a spot in the chase for the championship now, and I do believe he has now taken over the points lead overall. What a day for Kermica Jazzin. He'll take the victory. Kev Shearer, 9 one hundredths back. He actually tried making a move there at the line, but just couldn't get a run off of four. He'll finish in second. I think that's his best finish of the season. Tyler Markle, remember he got the wall earlier on. Dropped back almost outside of the top ten. Good job fighting back to get third. Zachariah Hall dominated this race. Led, I believe it was the first 17 laps before giving up the lead on lap 18 to Kermica Jazzin, he'll have to settle for fourth, but still a good needed run for that four team to try and get them up towards uh, 30th in the point standings. Jonathan Reigns, he'll finish the day out in fifth. Sixth place for John Andrews, good run for a guy who had a win a couple of weeks ago at Arizona. Jonathan Reigns, he'll finish seventh. Chris Dollerton, another driver who needed a good run. Dollerton coming into this race, 35th in points. He gets a top 10 in eighth. Colin Denton finishes ninth, and in his final Almond Joy Series start, Elijah Gordon qualified second. And he will finish his career with his head held high, finishing in the 10th position. Take a look here at the rest of your finishing results. Jordan Lopez, good run for him in 11th. Caitlin Sang, 12th, uh, 13th for James Qualls. Jay Jefferson gets 14th, 15th place would be Ben Watson. The rest of your top 20, Nick Gunther, Eric Hayden, uh, Julio Cesar, Richard Johnson, and Connor Breton. Cody Smart, 21st, 22nd, Angel Navarro. William Brock, Paul Minnick, and Joseph Romero, your top 25. Grayson Acovito battled back for a 26th place finish after he ended up uh, getting together with Ryan George to put us under our only caution. Jeffrey Finguy in 27th. 28th for the guy who came into this race as the points leader, Morris Dudemeyer Jr. He will now rescind the points lead to his junior motorsports teammate, Kermica Jazz. And Seth Cole gets 29th. Jesse Turner in 30th. Nick Johnson was 31st. DJ Curtis 32nd, 33rd for Mike Becker. 34th, Jeremy Jones, Davey Johnson, 35th, 36th for Ryan George, Mitchell Carter in 37th, and the last car to finish on the lead lap was Brooke Allen in 38th position. All 40 cars finished the race, but two of them finished a lap down. Cody Hagen, after that tire issue, he finishes 39th, and apparently some mechanical issues for Matthew Dalio. He had to pit earlier on, lost himself three laps, never gained them back, so Matthew Dalio not a good day for one of the two-time winners, but a good day for a two-time winner in his own right in Kermica Jazzin, picking up his second win of the season here today. Matthew Dalio, this is also not good for him if you consider the fact that he came in today's race 24th in points. So I don't know how far this is going to drop in the standings. This could put him down around the danger zone and that very critical 30th position in the points. doesn't matter how many wins you have. You could have two, you could have ten. If you don't make the top 30 in the points, you're not going to be in the chase for the championship. So we'll see what shapes out in the next coming weeks. we got five more weeks to end up setting up the chase field for the Almond Joy Series. And Kermica Jazzin may have just made a very good, solid case of being one of those drivers completely locked in to the chase for the championship. Tomorrow, we will have the Hershey Cup Series race coming here from Rockingham, North Carolina. Looks like that high line could be a factor, a wild card, in maybe the outcome of that race as well. Thank you all for tuning in to today's race. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to part of the crew today. You'll probably have noticed the frames were a little bit better. I've got Energy 2003 over on my other laptop. I'm going to be doing a lot of the offline recording on this laptop, doing my online racing on the other one, so that way you guys get better frames and maybe a more enjoyable race. But thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoyed the race, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to part 
to become a part of the crew today. We've shown you your full fishing results. Here come your point stains. Heading into next week. I don't know if next week's another off week for Almond Joy or if we're going to be having another dual weekend next week. You'll find out when we do. I also don't know what track we're going to for Almond Joy series, so you'll find that out at the same time as well as you've been watching a production of the NCRA Offline Racing at its best. So long from The Rock. <laughs>